What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we have another 2-in-1 AEW Unmatched figure review on the brand new AEW Unmatched Series number 2, Tay Conti and Sting figures. Very excited for these, man. They look incredible. I've been waiting on this set and waiting on this set and waiting on this set, and it's finally at my door. I can't wait to get into the reviews for you guys, and then we're going to dive into our top 10s of the year, our top 5s of the year, all these different things for WWE figures and AEW figures, man, but these look pretty good. I've been waiting on this wave. I've seen a ton of people online talking about this wave saying how it's the best wave of AEW figures yet. So we're going to find out some of those things as we dive into these figures. But we have our first Sting action figure from AEW. Another great women's talent here. And I'm excited to get into it. One thing you guys will notice immediately is that the Sting figure actually has a blue tint to it. So you guys can see it has blue compared to the silver of the Unmatched. And at the bottom it doesn't even say Unmatched. It says Luminaries Collection right here. It's got a little sparkle. It says blue and Luminaries there. It says Luminaries in blue, you dumb jackass. Over here, it says Sting in blue, and it's got like this holographic purplish pink border going around the figure there, which looks great, man. I really like the packaging, and I figured put these two together. Since we have the Proud and Powerful, and then we have MJF and Wardlow, I felt like this was the good to do the, you know, the two-in-one here, but spinning it around, they still have like their silver block letters right here, even though this is Luminaries Collection. On the back, it still says Series 2 Unmatched Collection over here. They just didn't put the Unmatched logo on it. You have their signatures here, images of the talent, rest of the figures in the wave. On the other side, you get AEW Logo logo you do get the pictures of the talent on the front of the packaging and that pretty much wraps up our packaging for the unmatched collection series number two Tay Conti and Sting packaging man but you guys know how we do it we're gonna crack these guys out of the packaging take a closer look at them take a look at the accessories and get into all the different things that is AEW unmatched series number two Sting and Tay Conti so let's go ahead and crack them out so here is Sting and Tay Conti out of their packaging. Looking pretty swell, man. I've taken them out. I've gotten the plastic covering off of them. I've posed them around a little bit. And I like what we've got going on with these. I think you guys are going to be impressed with these. If you're already impressed with them and you would like to grab them right now from Ringside Collectibles, you can do so over there. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. WrestlingFigures.com. I think they also have their Black Friday 4.0 sale going on. And if that is the case, man, you definitely want to get in on that. And do not use code free shipping. It's the slowest shipping shipping ever and it may arrive after Christmas. It's a very slow shipping service. I'm, I imagine that's probably why it is free. So use code MDTOYS on top of your Black Friday sale. You can pretty much just use priority shipping and get it very quickly and it's pretty much free shipping for your great Black Friday deal. So definitely go ahead and do that man. Never use code free shipping. It's very very slow. Use code MDTOYS and select priority shipping so you get your great order very quickly and before Christmas man. But besides all that, let's go ahead and dive into Sting and Sting's accessories. Then we'll run it back and take a closer look at Tay Conti's accessories and Tay Conti. So diving into Sting's accessories, man, we do get two pairs of interchangeable hands, a baseball bat, and an entrance coat. We will cover the entrance coat last, but first up, guys, we do have his interchangeable fisted hands. Now, out of the packaging, these do not come on the figure. Out of the packaging, he comes with his bat holding hand or mic holding hands, but I like the sculpt that these have on them. You guys can see here. It almost looks like a bear hand with uh, tape wrapped around it, if you guys can see that, but painted black, you can't really tell here and you get some like wrinkles in it and stuff that makes them look like gloves but I think if you look up close it does look like you know it kind of looks like a regular hand with tape over the hand like you know like wrist tape hands but in that black colorway like I said it does look like you know it looks like gloves so I, I don't think it's that big of a deal maybe the Dustin mold would have been cooler but maybe this is their way of using reuse I'm not entirely sure but I like the way they look anyways and you do get fisted hands so Kyle Peterson can sleep at night and besides our fisted hand you also get the mic holding hands and it's kind of weird because they're a little bit different here. You guys can see the left's kind of like a relaxed hand, and the right is like the trigger hand like we get from Santana. So, I don't know if they did, I don't know what the difference is there, but you guys can see the index finger is a little bit curled up more, and the sculpt is a little bit weird there. So, I don't know. Maybe they are just leather gloves. It's just a very odd looking sculpt to me, but they look like gloves when they're painted black, so I don't, I don't really have an issue with it, but there is that. And then, of course, we have Sting's black bat, which you cannot have a Sting figure without his black bat. It's a solid shape, not my favorite shape. I want to say this is is not wooden. This looks like a metal bat, to be honest with you, with the way this looks. It doesn't have wood grain in it. It is flat. This doesn't look like tape that would go around a wooden bat. This looks like the molded kind of grip that would go around a metal bat. So maybe this is a black metal bat, but I like the way it looks nonetheless. I like the sculpt and everything, and if you guys want to plug it into his hand here. Now, going into the trigger finger hand, it's going to be pretty difficult, I'd say. It will push down in there, but it, it, you know, it doesn't grip it the best. Like, it grips it, but it is kind of, it's not the most tight grip, but you can't pull that out, and then if you want want 
to put it into the other mic holding hand or back grabby hand. You just kind of push the handle through there in the gap and then he can hold that. He really doesn't grip it that tight though. It's not like a Mattel gripness I would say and I, I don't know. They're pretty equal as far as like the strength of the grip on the back but they do hold it well enough. Like I don't think you're gonna like have any problems with it but it's not like the greatest grip of all time. You know what I'm saying? It's not gonna just choke out the back but it gets the job done. And then for our last accessory you do get Sting's rubber entrance jacket. Now it is another rubber jacket which people hate but it does have these gold buckle details going down the front and the sides you do get this gold pattern wrapping around you do get like a you do get a nice pattern like kind of elegant looking pattern kind of stitched or molded into the flaps right here on the front you get that same pattern on the sleeves over here and on the back it does have the scorpion logo in red it even has it wrapped around the neck there and it was pretty easy to get off the figure like it came off really easily it is wearing this out of the packaging you know sting the sting figure is wearing this out of the packaging and i liked it i didn't really have any issues with it it's a pliable material. There's no split in it, but it goes on the figure relatively easily, and it comes off really easily. So, it is rubber, which sucks. I would have loved to seen a cloth jacket, but, you know, we're, we're just gonna have to roll with it. So, getting into the Sting figure, man, starting out at the head sculpt, I like what we have going on here, man. I actually like this head sculpt. I think that the likeness is there. It definitely looks like Sting in all aspects. I like the face paint going on there. I will say it's a bit flat. Like, you don't get a lot of realism out of it, but for the $20, $25 price point, I, uh, you know, I don't, I don't hate it. I think the sculpt is there. I really like the head shape. Like, Sting has a very prominent face. Like, his hair to his bone structure and his face to his chin and everything like that. I think, you know, the jawline tied it all together. I think that Sting is very prominent and you can tell immediately about the likeness and I think they captured it here. So, I don't really have any issues with it. I like the way it looks. The face paint, the hair color, the neck, everything like that really looks good. I like the Sting face a lot. Going down into the torso here, you do have the AEW Sting shirt. It is a long sleeve as he rocks on AEW television. We've got the big Sting logo here with the AEW. When this shirt first released, I didn't really care for it too much. I like it, but I really wish that the AEW logo wasn't so big. To me, it kind of looks like this is Sting, but don't forget it's AEW Sting. It's kind of what it kind of, you know, brings to my brain there. You get some really cool sculpt going down on the shoulders and the sleeves. It looks like a long sleeve t-shirt. You guys can see here, he does have the bicep swivel in there. He gets good arm articulation and everything, double jointed, and the joints feel tight. Like, it doesn't feel, uh, I feel like the quality of the joints is better on this Sting compared to some other figures, maybe like the Penta or some other figures you guys know about in the past with the with the weird elbows. I think these feel a little bit stronger here. The hands aren't as loose, interchanging them. One thing that was weird about this figure when I first saw it is I hated the way this crotch looked. I hated the way this shirt looked, and I'll, I'll go into detail right here on why that is. So when you first look at it, it just looks weird, right? This looks very weird to me. It looks like one of those 12-inch figures or something, but if you pop it free you will notice that the shirt cuffs over the waist, and that's how the shirt is. It's not like it's tucked in, so I guess they wanted to go for that non-tucked in detail, so I think that's why they went ahead and overlapped the waist, so that's why you get that weird looking crotch, but I was hoping when you pop this off, you would have the rest of the crotch with the belt and the continued design and the butt cheeks and everything, and then you just, when you pop the torso on there, the shirt covers it, but I guess you'd never see it, so that's why they just went ahead and did away with that and just have the long sleeve t-shirt and it wrapping around Around. and they do make this like a softer rubber so it makes sense like I understand it and all those things but it is going to hurt our articulation which we'll get into in a moment you do have like his sting legs you know like the padding going down the front of the thighs you get your sting logos on either side or your scorpion logos you do have like the padded like his his pants have always reminded me of football pants for some reason just because they have like those knee pads and you can see the thigh pads and stuff like that and then he does have his sting boots with his scorpion logo on there in silver and I'm not a big fan of these boots either just because they're kind of short and Dubby. I guess that's the way they look in real life, but you get some good wrinklage in there, and they look a bit like basic boots, and they don't really have a good ankle pivot. They, it's it's very, I would rather, like, it's kind of non-existent as far as a, a boot pivot. Like, it's kind of there, but not really. Now, as far as articulation, man, he can look down really good, and he can look up pretty solid. I like the head articulation a lot. You know, it is just a ball hinge there, which we've seen in the past. It's nothing, like, too immaculate, but it does allow for some pretty good articulation. Now, ab crunch-wise, he doesn't really have an ab crunch whatsoever. Like, that's, you know, you're not you're not going to get ab crunch out of this guy, and you're not really going to get him to bend over either, because he doesn't have the dip in waist like Kenny Omega, like the Bucks, like those other figures we see. So you're not going to get that, man. The only way you can sell it is if he bends over like this, and that's kind of weird looking. I do like the ball jointed legs, you know, that's, that's AEW staple. He has upper thigh cut, he does have a good double jointed knee, he gets the boot rotation and the ankle pivot, which is nice. He has the upper shoulder here, good bicep rotation, and the double jointed arms, which is really nice 
nice. Like the figure feels good in hand and it looks really good. I'm not gonna lie to you, but the ab crunch is pretty non-existent. So I don't know about fetting and stuff like that. I still think you could pose them around. You could make it work. Like I've seen people make basics work. And if you can make a basic work, this, this definitely destroys basic figures and it feels really good in the hand. It doesn't feel cheap. It feels hefty. It feels, you know, quality and all those different things, but you are not gonna get an ab crunch out of this guy. Now for your Sting Unmatched figure comparisons, guys, here is the Sting figure in the middle up next to the Unmatched Darby Allen and the Unrivaled Darby Allen. Now I don't have the Chase variants or anything like that just yet, but these do scale pretty well. I like the way they look up next to each other and everything like that, but you know, the height's pretty pretty good right there, I'd say. The, the height is nice on these guys. I like the way they scale and everything. Here's the more updated Darby over here with the tattoo and stuff. I think you guys will have no problems putting these up next to each other in your displays, on your figure shelves and all these things. The only thing that I'm noticing about the Sting right now is that his ankles get loose. Like, he wants to fall forward, and that's pretty annoying. So that, that kind of sucks, but the Darby Allen does look good up next to him. And then for your WWE Elite comparison with the AEW and Match 2 Series Sting, we have a couple of Mattel Elites. You have the Defining Moments Crow Sting, and then we have the Hall of Fame Sting, I think. I think this is the Hall of Fame version. And I like the way both of these look up next to this as well. I think all the likeness is there. I, I think I said, I think this head sculpt is more accurate. I don't know if you could put this head over there if you wanted to, or vice versa. But to me, this Sting looks the most accurate at two sting in the face. Nice. But I like, I, I love all these stings up next to each other. Sting is somebody that I've always loved ever since I was a little kid, so I, I'm Team Sting all the way, and this is a great figure. Now, diving into Tay Conti's accessories kind of looks a little weird, her head just laying here, man, but that's all you get. You just get two interchangeable heads. Now, this is the first head sculpt, and this is the one that does not come on in the packaging. This doesn't come in the packaging. This is just a loose head here. You guys will notice I do have some paint chipping right there, and the sideburns do look a little bit weird how you have the blonde underneath, but you can't really see it when the hair's laying flat, but I I actually like this head sculpt more than the other head sculpt. I think the likeness is better here. A lot of people say she looks like my wife. I, I don't really get that. I think there's certain angles and photographs you may see of Tay Conti that kind of favor her in some aspects, but overall, I do not think that she looks like my wife. No offense to Tay Conti, but my wife's the most beautiful woman on the planet. Now, you guys will see here, here's the interchangeable head sculpt, and she's not really smiling, right? Like, it's kind of like a weird smirk here. She has her hair on top of her head. I like the colors that we got going throughout. Like, you get the nice dark brown to blue blonde to like lighter and darker and all the different things there which is pretty cool and I really didn't think we would get a Tay Conti this early but you guys can see kind of the bun on top there but I don't know I think I like the serious face better which do you guys think you guys can let me know down in the comment section below which one you guys like more but I think I'm this this one over here for me but that pretty much wraps up Tay Conti's accessories man let's dive into the figure itself so diving into Tay Conti man starting out at the head sculpt I like this head sculpt we just covered it in the accessories portion right I like it I think the hair looks good and all these different things I like the color variation that we're getting and all that. So I, I think it's a successful head sculpt. I don't think we have to tear down the head sculpt or anything, but we did spend some time on it, so I'm not gonna get into there. I do have to acetone that little bit of blonde off the cheek bar right there, but at the end of the day, I like the way it looks, 360 way. Like the way it looks, man. Going down into the torso, she does have a nice metallic green top going on. I like the cross barrier that you got going on right there. The nice silver details. I wanna say that she had like some silver studs or silver polka dots all over this top and the bottoms on the like metallic green green part. I really like the metallic green color they chose. Like, it pops off really nice. It's got the nice sheen to it. It's not flat, so it does add a lot of character to it. But actually, now that you look on the back of the packaging, you will notice there it is. It literally has it right there, so I am not bullshitting. There should be some studs on not only the silver part, but the green portion of the top right there, so I knew I wasn't insane. However, I like the skin tone. I like what we got going right here. You guys will notice that the belly button is at, at the very bottom of the upper part of the torso, and then you do have the little bottoms part right here where it does dip down. So you do have the metallic green trunks going on. You get the fishnets going down on the legs. You get the black stripes going on. They do have her double cheeked up over here. So her underside is a little bit exposed right here, which I guess is accurate. Double jointed arms like we talked about. Fishnets going down. You have the metallic green knee pads on there. You do have like this tie pattern on the back of the butt cheek here and on the knee pad right there. And then she does have a new kick pad mold that we have not seen before, which I love because she has some kick pad rotation. Shout out to my man Magic for that. But the only thing I'm seeing here is that her feet are pretty damn small. Like, I think this is accurate. This is the way her feet look in the kick pad, so I can't say nothing. However, I will say, I feel like it does make it difficult to stand at some portions, but overall, I'm digging the figure, man. It, like, feels really good. If you guys want to see articulation, she can't really look up or down with the, without the head popping off. And I have, I have noticed that it's hard to get the head on because of the hair piece. 
which you guys will probably notice, it doesn't really pop on. It kind of just kind of sits on there, at least in my experience. But she does have good bicep swivel up here. The arms can go above 90 degrees. You have the great double jointed arms, which are never going to get old. Just like Sting, no real ab crunch. She does have a better ab crunch than Sting, though, but you guys will see the head pops off because it doesn't go all the way up in there for whatever reason. Like, it just, it's kind of a challenge to get that head sculpt completely on there. She does have ball joints. Her split is not the best here, but she does have ball joints, so, you know, she, she still gets good articulation. You got the upper thigh cut, double jointed knee over here. You do get boot rotation. You do have up and down here, and she has a better ankle pivot than Sting, so that's nice to see there. So, the Tay Conti actually has better articulation than the Sting figure, so that's something to note, but there is your Tay Conti AEW Unmatched figure. And for your Tay Conti figure comparisons, guys, here's Tay Conti up next to the rest of our women's AEW division that we've seen so far in the figure line that competes in the ring on a regular basis. I know we have Brandy, but I wanted to get the women that are in the ring more than likely. You have Sheeta, Nyla Rose, Tay Conti, Riho, and Britt Baker. And I like all these. I like, you know, all of them have their, all of these do have their good portions about them, but I want, I, I don't want to overstep here, but I think Tay Conti is our best women's figure so far. I think that is definitely something to say. I think the joints and the overall feel and the likeness and the gear and the kick pads and everything going on with it, I think overall she is the best figure because Sheeta doesn't have lower leg rotation. Riho doesn't have lower leg rotation. Britt Baker's arms are a little bit loose and her boots are more like basic boots. And the Nyla Rose is not my favorite figure, which we covered in the ranking of AEW Unrivaled Series number seven. But that wraps up your Tay Conti figure, man. Pretty overall good stuff. But I think that pretty much wraps up this two-in-one AEW Unmatched Collection Series number two review on Sting and Tay Conti, man. Overall thoughts on both is I'm very impressed. They actually both shocked me a lot. I think the Sting figure really shocked me a lot. I was really worried about it. It still looks a little bit odd. The articulation is not the best. However, I really like the likeness. I think the feel of the figure in the hands really nice. While again, it doesn't pose the best and it doesn't give you the best range of motion, I still like it a lot and I think it's going to add a lot to displays. I think it's really good Sting. The Tay Conti figure is very fire. I think it's the best women's figure we've seen so far from Jazzwares and AEW, which is really nice to see. Can't wait for more figures of her and the women's collection, you know, the, the women's division overall. It doesn't really bother me that the dots are missing from the attire, like the silver. I still think the metallic green color is nice and all those things, man. If you guys would like to grab these, definitely go over to ringsidecollectibleswrestlingfigures.com. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. Again, do not use code for ship. Use code MDTOYS and use priority shipping. You will pretty much get free priority shipping and it'll get to you a lot quicker and it'll be very nice. So use that. You guys will save money live better Walmart. But seriously though, I like these. I think they overall did a great job on them. I can't wait to rank this set. I'm, in, I'm interested to see how the rest fare in comparison, but thank you guys so very much for watching. Hope you guys did enjoy. Let me know your thoughts on these figures down in the comment section below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you and don't cross the line like the Sting figure when he said, I don't want ab crunch, Brad. You cross